It's a sin. You know, many people think that everything in life that's good or pleasurable or that makes them happy, that it's sinful, that there's something wrong with it. In the 1980s, I used to dance in nightclubs to a song by the Pet Shop Boys. Part of the lyrics are, everything I've ever done, everything I ever do, every place I ever go, everywhere I'm going to, it's a sin. And that's what many people believe sin is all about, that if it's good, it's pleasurable, if it makes us happy, if, if it feels good, then it must be a sin, and that the only things that aren't sinful are the things that make us feel miserable. Today I want to talk about sin and what it's really all about. As I do, I want you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. So I think a lot of well-meaning people while I want to believe they were well-meaning, communicated this idea to us that anything that was good or pleasurable or fulfilling in life was somehow sinful, that only hard work and misery were, were good, authentically good, like virtuous. But as a follower of the teachings of Jesus, I know that's not true. And how I know that is because of really paying attention to what's in the New Testament. Now, the New Testament was written in Greek, and consistently in the New Testament, there's a word that's used that we translate into English as sin, and that word is harmatia. It's a Greek word. It's commonly used in archery, you know, bow and arrow stuff, and it means missing the bullseye, missing the mark. You know, if you're shooting arrows, you have a target, and the center of the target is that bullseye, it's the mark. And harmatia is when you miss that mark, even if you just miss it by an inch, it's considered harmatia. It's being off center, it's being off the mark, it's about missing the bullseye. From that perspective, sin, harmatia, is about not being on target, not being centered. Now, we don't talk a lot today about using the idiom of being on target, but we do talk about being balanced, about being whole. And I think that conveys a similar sense, that harmatia is somehow being off-centered, off-kiltered, not being well-balanced. The other context for the Greek use of the word harmatia is in theater. You wouldn't think of that. But theater... In Greece, one of the common forms of theater were Greek tragedies. And in Greek tragedies, there's a hero that has everything going for them, but because of some fatal flaw, a harmatia, or a harmatia, that they have a downfall. This harmatia may be pride, it may be arrogance, it may be self-absorption, it may be self-doubt. But whatever it is, it's something that leads them to fall apart. In other words, harmatia isn't an act. It's a way of being. It's about being prideful. It's about being arrogant. It's about something like that that's a cradle flaw for us that we don't work out, that we don't correct. And when we don't correct it, we're out of balance, out of harmony with life around us, and we're living in sin. 40 years ago, when I was doing a master's in spirituality, boy, that was a long time ago, but I was introduced to the writing of Aldous Huxley. Huxley was a novelist and a philosopher. He was British, and he wrote a number of novels, one of which we studied carefully called The Devils of Loudun. And in The Devils of Loudun, Huxley proposes an understanding of the concept of transcendence. Transcendence is the human ability to seek out and to experience something more than what's given in an immediate situation. And Huxley understood transcendence as moving in three directions. It could move in one of three directions. There was downward transcendence, horizontal transcendence, and upward transcendence. Huxley understood downward transcendence as transcendence in drinking or sex or pleasure or things like that. Horizontal transcendence was 
transcending into human creations like music or art or things that are beautiful. Even nature would fit in this category. An upward transcendence for Huxley was about transcendence into the divine, about experiencing God in a pure way. Huxley's perspective was really based in his stern British upbringing and Christian theology of the day. I think he got this partially right and partially wrong. What was partially right was that he saw that transcendence moves in multiple dimensions. It moves throughout our life in multiple ways. What he got wrong was the values he put around it about some aspects of transcendence being wrong and some being right, about some being evil and some being good. Our experience of transcendence draws us out of ourself. And in that, it's a way in which we're searching for that fulfillment, searching for that balance, searching for that wholeness. We don't always get it right. Sometimes we get messed up along the way. And that may be where addiction comes in or something else. But we sometimes get it right or almost right and become inspired by beauty or truth or art or music. And just because some people believe they're transcending into the divine doesn't mean they're getting that right either because there's a lot about religious transcendence that makes people very judgmental and harsh and brittle. I think with transcendence, the words of Maya Angelou really come into play here, that we do the best we can until we know better. The transcendence is about finding that fulfillment, that wholeness and balance. How that relates to sin is that all of our attempts to find goodness and truth and beauty and purpose and meaning in life are drawing us into more balance. And we need to keep doing that until we really get it right. And that process is moving away from sin and moving into greater and greater wholeness. Ultimately, sin is choosing to live in an unbalanced way. And we turn away from sin by moving in ways that lead us to wholeness and health so that we're living our life on target. I think that's something to really consider and look at for each of our lives. And I hope that talking about that's helpful for you. And I'm sure this is raising some questions, so leave me some comments. Give me your thoughts in the comments section. And be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and know that I really appreciate the time you spend with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.